Welcome back to the beginner's guide. Our website keeps growing and growing and step by step we also improve the looks of it. Now in this video we will add one really important property to our website. The position property. Let's do that in this video. So back on our website and one important information before we start. Because if you never heard of the position property, make sure to check out my video right here. There should be the link. Because in this video, we really have a look or take a look at the basics of the position property. Why we need it, what the different values we have are and how these values interact with each other. And with this basic set, we can now continue right here on our website in the beginner's guide and have a look at how we can apply this position property in a practical manner. Now let's do this and to start we should go back to our code right here. I'm in the style CSS file as you can see right there. And the first thing we will change is the page title right there. Because remember the title if we inspect it right here is this part up here. And I would like to have a specific behavior for the title. I would like the title to remain up there if I scroll down. And at the moment, well, this is not happening. So let's change that. And we can change this by adding a, well, specific position to this title. Let's maybe add the position up here. And this position, this position value is called fixed like that. And let's add the semicolon. And let's also add top zero right there. Also important, also something we talked about in the other video I just mentioned. The important thing now is that with position fixed and top zero added, the following behavior can be observed if you reload the page. Well, we can see that Mike's world is now added to the top basically and it remains there if we scroll down. And that's really cool because with that position fixed declaration being applied, we can now position Mike's world related to the viewport. And that's the reason why it sticks up there and why our page, well, looks a bit better now. Now the problem now is of course that, well, this kind of should be on the entire page width and not just right there. So let's go back and let's add something else. And this is width. And let's add 100% right there to make sure it covers the entire page. Now, before we continue, one important note. We will talk about the height and width and what we can do with that, the pixels and the percentages in one of the next videos of this series. So in this video, I will just apply some of these things to make sure that the position property works correctly. In case you're not sure about how this works in detail, don't worry. We will talk about that later in the series as I just said. So for the moment, let's just apply the basics that we need to make our page work. And this basic is for example, this width 100% declaration right here. So if we save that and go back now and reload our page, you can see that now we have our beautiful Mike's world kind of header actually, right there on top of our page with the width of 100%. That's really nice. But if you followed the series and if you know the structure of our page, you might see something now. Because there is something hidden behind Mike's world now. Do you know what I mean? Because if we look at the nav part right here, can you see it? The nav element is now behind Mike's world. Now, Mike's world should be on top, that's not the issue. But nav should actually be positioned, well, kind of below it. Now, how can we change that? Well, the answer is there are multiple ways how to solve this issue. I will just show you one way now, which in my opinion is a really easy to implement and easy to understand solution. So let's go back. And before we do that, we should maybe quickly rearrange our code right here because I would like to do it like this. So let's maybe delete it right here and position the class right there. So you are free to organize that the way you want it, but I like to have it in a way that I have the CSS code that refers to elements up here and up here. And then we can follow the CSS code that refers to classes right there, right there, and right there. 
As I said, you can do this as you prefer actually, but I think with that approach we can make sure that this is kind of kept as well simple as possible and makes it easy for us to keep the overview. What we can also do of course is we could for example add something like header right here can see this is how you can comment out code in CSS. So simply add a slash and the star symbol at the beginning of the code that should be commented out. And then add the star and the slash at the end of the code that should be commented out. So this could be the header for example and the trip text. Well I have to look that up to be honest. I think the trip text was in the main part so we could also add that. As said, you don't have to do that. I just do it for now in this video to make sure that we keep the overview of the different areas we have right here in our CSS code. So this is the header. And now coming back to what we wanted to add because we wanted to work on the nav part actually. Because the problem is, as I said, that this element should now be below Mike's world. Now, how can we do that? Well, the answer is we don't have to add anything right here. We'll work on that in a few seconds. But we'll just go back to index.html right there and now add a class to our header. We don't have to do that, but in CSS it makes things a lot easier if you work with classes. So let's add a class to header and maybe call it fixed bar. Again, the cap up case, we talked about that in another video. And let's save that and go back to our style sheet. And now I will add this class right here. So it's called fixed bar, like that. And now we will add something. And what will we add? Well, we will add a height right here. Let's maybe add 70 pixels, for example. Now you might ask yourself, what are we doing here? Well, if I add the height now also right here and maybe add a height of let's say 40 pixels because we have a padding of 10 so 40 plus 10 top plus 10 bottom is 60 and now we have the height of 70. Can you imagine where this is going to? Let's see. Let's save it and let's go back and let's now reload the page and see what happens because if we do that well, then you can see that now our nav element is visible again. And what's the reason for that? Well, let's inspect that to understand what we just did here. This is our page title, so the class that we have, and basically this part right here. And important, right here we defined that this part is fixed. This means we excluded this class basically from our document flow. This is the reason why nav was hidden behind Mike's world, because for the nav element Mike's world wasn't there anymore. But now we added this fixed bar class. And this fixed bar class, if you look right here, kind of wraps this page title class. So this part basically, right here, is out of the actual document workflow, but the wrapping class, this header class, well it's not. It's still part of the normal document workflow. Now, as we know that, and as we know that our class that is not part of the document workflow has a height of 40 plus 10 plus 10, so 60, well, adding 70 to this class that is part of the workflow leads to exactly this result. Because as you can see right here, the fixed bar right there now defines that we are able to specify the distance between this first element right there, because that's what we got. So we have this element in our workflow and the following element, the nav element. You can see it right here, the distance, or actually you can't see it. Let's maybe do it like this. I think this makes it easier. So here we have the header class, right? And if I open this nav element, you can see that the unordered list kind of comes after that. So the nav element is just the element we have for our general website structure. Therefore the ul, the unordered list, is bigger than the nav element. Not a big issue right here. The important thing is that with this approach we were now able to easily add this bar on top right here and additionally made sure that the following element, so home and contact, is also displayed correctly. Now there is one thing that I don't like right here still and this is this gap right here to the left. 
we can easily solve that if we go back to our CSS code and add body up here, like that, and simply define that body should have a margin of zero. If we save that and if we go back, you can see that now our header bar right here even looks better and now our page occupies the entire space. Some small cosmetical correction, but I think it's better the way it is right now. Now with that, we made sure that our header here looks good actually, but there is still one thing that I would like to add. If we go back right here, then I would like to add another thing to our page title right there. And this is called text minus align. And this should be center. If I save that, go back, load the page, then you can see that the text is now positioned well in the center of our page. Again, we will talk about the details behind the text formatting and the text styling later throughout the series. I just wanted to take the chance to show you that you can also easily fix that by just adding that simple property. So we now kind of finish the positioning of Mike's world. And to be honest, if I look right here, the general positioning is quite okay, actually. Now, what do I mean by general positioning? The general content parts that we have. So for example, right here, our header element up here, right? This one, then we have our navigation, then we have the main part, and then we have the footer. This is quite okay actually at the moment. There is maybe one more thing that we can do and this is maybe give this a little bit of a different color because this is actually not part of the footer. It's still part of our main element. So let's quickly change that maybe by simply going, well, well maybe to the index HTML file. And now right here we have this paragraph and let's maybe also add a class right here like that and let's maybe call it feedback like that and if we now go back to our style file and now also add the footer you can see this is also kind of a preparation for the next video already we will just add footer right here and now refer to our feedback class we just created and now define a background color color like that of again, let's maybe use 521, 751, this purple. Let's say that the color should be white and text align, we learned that in the header, should be sender like that. And if we go back and save that, yeah, then this looks better now for the moment. But coming back to what I was talking about a few seconds ago is that the general structure of the page is okay. The problem we now have is not our general positioning, it's the way our elements are displayed inside this kind of elements that give the page the structure. So what do I mean? Well, we have a problem with the way this list is displayed inside the nav element right here. We also have a problem with the way the text right here and the images are displayed in our main element. And we also have a problem if we scroll down right here with the way our elements are displayed in the footer because we would like to have this text right here next to Max picture for example. But these are not issues necessarily related to the position property. For this purpose we need another property and this property is called display. So in the next video of the series, and this will be one video again, we will have a look at the theory behind the display property and of course also apply it to our web page. And with that, we will do another step regarding the styling of our page and make it step by step a little bit more beautiful. Now, as always, the only thing I can say right now is thanks again for watching this video. I hope you liked it and I hope to see you in the next video of the series. Bye.